Welcome to Tea Ray Radio Shop, my name is Neve, and today's video is going to be a comparison between the Motorola DP1400 and the Motorola RT. So Motorola has definitely been innovating over the last couple of years, redesigning the models. First they've brought out the R7 to replace the DP4000 series and now they've brought out the R2 and announced the cancellation of the DP1400 series. So the R2 is basically a replacement for the DP1400. This is the now cancelled DP1400 device. Um, there's so many reasons why people loved this at the time and why it was so widely adopted into many industries. For starters, it was extremely affordable. It's packed full of essential features to make it a great productivity and safety tool. Um, you can use these in literally any environment that's not ATEX rated from retail to schools to a construction farm, nightclub. And this is the new R2 device. Just released by Motorola this year and like I said it is supposed to be the direct replacement for the DP1400. So here's the two devices side by side. This one's the DP1400 and this one is the R2. First I'm going to start comparing them physically, how they look and then we're going to dive into the actual features of the devices. Just looking at them, they do look very similar and the DP1400 is more tapered and the R2 is actually a bit more squared. Um, from the side you can tell that the R2 is significantly slimmer than the DP1400 but overall they've both got the same sort of simplistic minimalistic design. Both devices only come in one form factor, which is um, this one that you see. They don't come in any keypad version or any display version at all. On the R2 data sheet, it actually says that it's 15% slimmer than the DP1400. If I hold them in my hand, this is slightly easier to hold. I'm just going to turn the radios on. So the next thing that I've noticed is the LED indicator light. So on the DP1400, the LED indicator light's just here. And it shows the operational status of the radio. On this radio, it's absolutely tiny. And you can't see it at all from this angle. Whereas this is where it's located on the R2. And it's actually wrapped around the front of the radio. So you can see it front facing and top facing so just for comparison you cannot see the led indicator light from this angle at all you can only see it from the top facing angle on the dp1400 but that's the first change that i've noticed between the two devices and i do think it's just to improve user experience they've both got large textured push to talk and um, the one on the r2 is slightly bigger so that would be much easier to press if you had gloves on. And then down here, there's two programmable buttons. So on the DP1400, they're kind of um, horizontal. And then on the new version, the, deep, uh, the R2, sorry, they're kind of stacked on top of each other. And I do think that might have been a design to make them easier to press. Because if you see here, if I press this button, I'm kind of covering both the buttons. Whereas if I press this one, I'm only kind of getting the top button. I've noticed that neither of the devices have a dedicated um, emergency button on them. But that's okay, you can actually program these programmable buttons to become an emergency alert when pressed. This is the DP1400 accessory connector. It's connected down here so it won't come off. And it's quite thick and you have to swizzle it round like that to actually attach the accessory so i find that quite difficult to do um because it doesn't it just wants to ping straight back up whereas on the r2 we've got this much more slimmer version and i find that so much easier to swivel around to connect the accessories the actual accessory port connector itself, they both have a two um, pin accessory port, which means that they have compatible accessories. If you are upgrading from the DP1400 to the R2, you can use the same audio accessories. 
and they do also use the same charges the batteries themselves are not same so you can't use the same batteries for the dp1400 for the r2 but the charging contacts down here are the same so you can use the same charges they also have the same battery locking mechanism here i'm just going to turn this radio off and i'll show you how the battery mechanism works so you just slide this across to the right and then pull that down and it'll unlock the battery and then you just push it off again i'm just going to turn this off and then this just slides across pops down and the battery just slides off the battery for the r2 is much much slimmer than the battery for the dp1400 Other than that, they're pretty much designed um, as any classic two-way radio is. You've got the channel indicator knob just here and then the on, off and volume knob just here. The only other design that I want to talk about before moving on to the features is um, this speaker of the device. So on the R2, the speaker microphone is being designed with a low magnetic magnetism. Um, this just means that if you're working in a manufacturing environment or anywhere with metal dust, it's less likely to attract the dust to the speaker. Um, this is really important because that metal dust can get into the speaker and clog it up and actually distort the audio. Um, so yeah, low magnetic magnetism speaker. <laughs> So the DP1400 has a maximum of 32 channels and the R2 has a maximum of 64 channels. They both have pre-programmable text message capabilities on digital only. Um, so that means you can get a predefined text message that can be sent, for example, if you clicked one of the programmable buttons. Both the DP1400 and the R2 have a rental timer built in. So in the programming, you can set the radio to only work till say Friday. And then after Friday, the radio will stop working. This is especially useful um, for companies who rent the, <laughs> rent the devices out, like event companies or something like that. You're lending them out to a certain team for construction um, and then they can only use them to the time frame that you've enabled the radio to work until. Both the DP1400 and the R2 have Vox capabilities, um, sometimes called hands-free. This is when the speaker on the device um, is always listening for your voice and when it hears it, it automatically transmits. The DP1400 is IP54 rated and the R2 is IP55 rated against dust and water ingression. They are both um, tested to military standard 80. So on to um, audio capabilities of the devices, the R2 has acoustic feedback suppression and um, this is a feature that means if another radio is within the same vicinity you won't get that howling sound, it will um, suppress the feedback. The R2 also has user selectable audio profiles um, which are built into the device through the programming. The R2 also has sync plus noise suppression, but you do require a license. Um, another audio capability of the devices is that the DP1400 can go as loud as 98 fonts, whereas the R2 can go as loud as 101 fonts, which means that this will perform better in noisier environments. But yeah, that's all of the main features of the two devices. Um, like I said, the DP1400 has been cancelled by Motorola now and this is now its replacement. So if you already have these on your system and you're looking to buy something compatible or you're just looking to upgrade, then the R2 is the next evolution of the DP1400. Um, I think the new design has been thought out mainly to increase customer and user experience with the device. That's everything for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. We put out educational and sometimes entertaining two-way radio content. So if that's something that you're interested in, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to leave a like on this video. If there's anything else that you'd like to see on the channel, please leave it in the comments down below and we'll see what we can do.